In this video, we are going to walk through a coding solution to the total likes for user REST API technical interview question. So let's jump in. So in this question, we are given access to a fake REST API endpoint, API post, and the endpoint is paginated and expects two query parameters. The first one is user, which is a required string, and the second is page, which is a required positive integer, and it is one based. So for example, we've got HTTPS example.com API posts where the user is Alice and the page is two. And so for the requested page, it will respond with a JSON array of post objects created by that user, where each post object contains an integer field likes. Pages are contiguous, so if page K is empty or the server returns with a non-200 status, there are no further pages beyond K. So we need to implement a function that takes a user and then fetches all pages until the server responds with a status other than 200 or it returns an empty JSON array. We need to sum all likes across every successfully retrieved page and return the total as an integer. If the first request fails or returns an empty array, we simply return zero and any network or JSON error or non-200 status codes encountered mid-sequence must stop further requests and the function must return the partial sum already accumulated, which is possibly zero. So let's look at an example here. So we've got our user Alice, and then we've got our mock data, which represents three pages of data, as we've got three inner arrays with different likes numbers. So very simply, our job is to simply sum all of the likes. So we've got five plus 10 plus three, which is simply 18. So we return 18. And in this second example here, we've got a user ghost. And when we look up ghost, well, the mock data is one page, which is empty. And so we simply return zero, as there are no likes for that user. So hopefully it makes sense. Let's jump into the coding solution now. So I think the first thing we need to do is to define a variable total. And so this will initialize an accumulator to keep the running total of likes across all pages. So I can say let total and we'll initialize it as zero. And so next we are going to open an infinite pagination loop starting at page one as it is one based and incrementing after each iteration. And the loop will be broken explicitly when the data ends or an error occurs. So we can say for let page equal to one, and then we will have no termination as it's infinite, as it'll be terminated internally, and we can say page plus plus, so to increment it each time. Then we will add a try catch block, so any network or parsing errors causes a controlled exit from the loop, so we can say try, and then in the catch, what we can do here is we can simply break out of the loop. The first thing I wanna do is construct the URL to make that network request to, so I can say const URL equals, so here we have our base URL, example.com, API forward slash posts. And now we need to add in our query parameters. So the first one will be user, and we're going to use encode URI component. And the reason for that is it will escape special characters in user to ensure it is a valid query string. And then we can also add on our page here, and we know that will just be an integer, so we don't need to escape that. Now we're going to actually make that request, or we can say const response equals await, and then we'll use the fetch API and then pass in that URL here. And so this will send the HTTP get request and await again will suspend this coroutine until the promise resolves, but it will not block the event loop, which is important. So next, what I can do is I can check the status code. So I can say if response.status, so if it isn't 200, well then we know it, an error has occurred. So again, we can simply break out of the loop. Then we wanna get access to the data. So we can say const data equals await response dot JSON like that. And so this will parse the JSON body into a JavaScript array of post objects. And similarly enough, if there are no objects, so it's an empty array, well, we're going to break out like what the question says. We can say if bang data dot length. So if it's falsy, zero will be falsy. We can then simply just break. Otherwise, what we can do is we can increment total. So we can say total plus equals, so what we're adding to it, so data.reduce. So we've got our sum and the current post. And then what we can do is we can say sum plus p.likes or zero. So if there are no likes, we can just make it to be zero. So there's no incrementing going on. And then our default sum value will be zero. So essentially what we're doing here is we're iterating over each array, adding up all the likes, and then adding that to our total variable, which is going to be the variable that we return after we break out of the loops. So underneath our for loop, we can say return total. So let's run the tests and see if they pass. One has failed, so we've outputted zero and expected 18. Okay, so I see the issue here. I said if the response status is 200, we should exit, but it shouldn't be. So if it's anything other than 200, then we break. If it's 200, it means it's successful, then we can just continue on with the loop. So let's run the test now. Perfect, they passed. 
Let's submit the test sweep and ensure all the tests pass. Perfect, they all passed. So very simple question here. As you can see, it's easy to make one little mistake, which especially in an interview, the pressure is on, it can be easy to get caught up in that. So that's why practicing it is really important. So if you wanna try it out for yourself, the link to the question is in the description and hopefully you got some value out of it. If you did, please like and subscribe and share it with a friend. It helps the channel out a lot and I will see you in the next one.